follow the recipe, and guess what? You'll be as golden as my balls are. Hi everybody, I'm Frank Pellegrino Jr., co-owner of Rayo's Restaurant here in New York City. I am here today to share with you my grandmother's recipe for Sunday gravy. Well, this has been a staple not only of my household ever since I grew up, but every other Italian American in the country. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some olive oil and we're gonna add it to our pot over here. Now what I'm gonna do is take a few garlic cloves, just a quick tap like that, place that in here. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna wait till the garlic starts to shimmer in the pan a little bit. And then we're gonna add our meats and braise them. So the meats that we're gonna use today to prepare our gravy are beef top round. We have these beautiful loin pork chops, sausage, uh, and we have bracciole, which is in Italian a big hug. And actually that's exactly what it is. You roll up the meat and it hugs itself. And it's really delicious and it's gonna add a great deal of flavor to our gravy. Now we're just about ready to sear. As you can see, our garlic is starting to shimmer in the pan, which means the oil is at the right temperature to start our searing. Also note that once your garlic starts to brown like that, you're gonna remove it from the pan because ultimately it'll give you a bitter flavor. Sunday gravy was the go-to dish for my great-grandparents because they didn't have any money and they usually had to feed eight, 10 people at a time. I'm often asked, what's modernata sauce? What's gravy? And what's the right term? Well, Sunday gravy is just that, it's Sunday gravy, and it's more of a braised stew than a marinara sauce. Traditionally, a marinara sauce is olive oil, tomatoes, salt, pepper, garlic, basil. This is something that takes hours. You're really braising everything and, and really cooking it for a long time because the meats are very, very tough. Sunday gravy for me growing up was a mandatory uh, dining event every Sunday at about, I don't know, three o'clock was when the meal would start. My grandmother would actually come out the front door of the house, stand on the stoop and scream my name. And I literally had to be there within 10 or 15 minutes, no matter where I was. I can hear my grandmother's voice calling me. Not only would we be dipping bread into the gravy and getting our hands smacked and scolded, but when we made the meatballs, my grandmother would have to hide them because before she put them in the sauce, we would steal them all. And I can't tell you how many beatings I got for stealing meatballs. So once your meats start to brown, remove it from the pan, set it aside. So we've basically seared all of our meats here. I'm gonna let them rest over here and then we're gonna go and build the foundation of the sauce. I'm going to add some tomato paste and water. So right now at this point, we're ready to add our tomatoes. And today what I'm going to do is, I'm just gonna add them in from the can and use this tried and true tool of a masher. And we're just gonna go in there and start to break these tomatoes up. So Rayo's was founded in 1896 by a great, great grand uncle. The restaurant was passed on to his sons. And ultimately my uncle Vincent owned the restaurant and he married my grand aunt. And she ultimately became the chef of the restaurant. And unbeknownst to my family was that Mimi Sheridan, the world renowned food critic at the time for the New York Times was dining at the restaurant on occasion. Mimi comes into the kitchen and says to my uncle Vincent, by the way, I'm gonna write a little something about your restaurant in, in the New York Times. And my uncle Vincent looked at Mimi Sheridan and said, please keep it small. Little did we know that it was a three-star review. And back in those days, that was, and still to this day, is uh, an incredible uh, honor to be bestowed. And hence, the, uh, culinary notoriety of Rayo's. So now, since our tomatoes are boiling, I'm gonna return the meat to the sauce. All right, now, since we have our gravy going, we're gonna make some meatballs together. I'm gonna to smash the garlic cloves as such. Now that we've minced the garlic, we have to just chop some fresh parsley. So we have a pound of ground beef, half a pound of pork, 
half a pound of veal. Just blend it all together with no seasoning. Once we have it all kind of mixed together, I'm gonna take a big pinch of salt, put it on top, eh, a little bit more. Take some fresh cracked pepper. And what I'm going to do is take about half of the garlic that we've minced. I'm just gonna rub it on top. Blend it all together so it's nice and even. So now we're gonna add some eggs. Add the water. Well, you can use milk, it's a matter of preference. Breadcrumbs. So now we have the desert. Now I'm gonna make it snow in the desert. Now we're really ready to fold it all on in and mix it together and blend everything. Rayo's is about the neighborhood and it's about the people from the neighborhood. And it has been a gathering spot for people of that neighborhood since the turn of the century. And my father was adamant about making sure that their place was solidly intact. They came first. Hence, one of the reasons why the restaurant is so challenging to get into. Also, I need to mention that there's only 10 tables inside the restaurant. And I think at the end of the day and the end of your dining experience, you are part of the experience. You bring your own seasoning to this party or stew or gravy. Okay, so now we're ready to fry our beautiful meatballs. One thing that's really important when cooking and frying meatballs, the oil is very hot and very dangerous and it's very easy to burn yourself. So take a tremendous amount of care as you're frying the meatballs. So as we fry the meatballs, we place them on a paper towel so this way the oil can drain. And we want the oil to drain because we don't want that residual oil to go into the gravy. So about a half an hour before this is finished cooking, we'll add the meatballs and they will cook all the way through and you'll be able and ready to serve. So our sauce has been cooking now for over two hours and we're ready to prepare our pasta, which we're gonna do now. One of the most important things when preparing pasta is to salt the water. I suggest two tablespoons of salt. We're gonna add our favorite pasta, and this is rigatoni, great brand by the way. We're gonna let the pasta cook for about 11 minutes. We're gonna to start to put this all together and get ready to plate everything. So one of the critical things to do as you're going to plate this is we wanna season and flavor the macaroni with the sauce. So we're gonna take some of our Sunday gravy and I'm gonna place it into the pan over a medium flame. So now I'm gonna return my pasta to this sauce and I'm gonna mix it together so that the pasta absorbs the sauce. People fight over the bracciole, feel free to slice it up, then yes, you mitigate any fighting that may occur. So now what I'm gonna do is the garnish is take some fresh basil. And voila. All right, now we're ready for the main event. It's time to dig in. I'm gonna make myself a little plate here. Salad, little Italian bread, toasted, and guess what? You are home for sure. All right, here we go. Let's see if I lived up to my grandmother's standards here. Cheers. My grandmother and great-grandmother would be very proud of me right now. This is actually really good. If you'd like to try this for yourself, click below for the recipe. And please, come join us at the restaurant. And if you can't make it to the restaurant, bring us home. You can pick us up in any one of your stores. Have a beautiful Sunday. Boy, oh boy, do I have a lot of ball jokes. <laughs> Feel free, this is nice, you know, you can make. I didn't know I had such liberty. Oh, we have to redo the whole thing then. <laughs>